We are here in Barcelona at MWC 25 at the IBM booth. There are a lot of discussions about language models, but what about small models? I think it's really interesting that the industry is starting to realize that we need to focus on what's going to give us the right return on investment and the right performance. So what we're doing in IBM is we have released our small language models, which will be models that are less than 30 billion parameters. So an example would be, there's a 7 billion parameter IBM Granite model. And what we do is we take that model and we bring in the enterprise data that's relevant to the use case and the customer that we're dealing with. And what that gives them is performance that's often equal to or greater than very large models, which are like 400 billion parameters, which use a lot of resources, not just in training, but in the inference as well. What is the perception when we talk about language models? We're talking about small language models that are maybe more affordable and bring more revenue. Is that correct? Y yes. If you look at it this way, when we try to have innovation and when we try to push these solutions out to use them, then what you find is that they're expensive, both from a resource perspective and license fees, et cetera. And that sometimes they don't actually match the use case or your company's needs because every company is different. So they have their own data about their own products, about their own thesis on how they want to go to market, their ethics about how they want to treat their customers. So you want to bring that into the model so that you, when their customers are using it, maybe for whether it's customer care interaction or sales online, you want to make sure that it matches what they require. So that means if you have a small model, it's less resources, so it's less expensive, which means you can use it and scale it out with much less resources. So therefore, you can use it in more instances right across the business without being concerned about the cost. That sounds really like a mindset, a different mindset. Yeah. Who are the decision makers and who need to understand well when we talk about language models in organizations, and particularly when we talk about those uh, communication service providers that are looking all the time, new solutions and how yeah. to implement them very fast, but also has to be fast effective. Yeah. So who are the ones that we talk with, who are the decision makers? Yeah. An example would be within operations in a telecom operator, the operations team often have to look on many screens to get access to what's happening in the network, whether it's in the radio or the core or transport, are they looking at performance data, are they looking at faults, etc. What you can do with a large language model or a small language model is that you can use that as the interface into the data. So you might have, for instance, time series models, which we have and we're showcasing here Yes. We have time series models running, which are highlighting issues that are happening on the network and predicting and forecasting that there's going to be a certain resource constraint, congestion, etc. And when you do that, what you want to do is use a language model to say, investigate this for me and let it do the reasoning and tell you what it's doing. So it's going in, it's looking at this piece of data, it's saying, okay, I can confirm then that this is in the radio network and I can confirm that this is the type of KPI which is affected, and the reasoning will actually come up in language for you and tell you that KPI at the same time as this KPI is saying to me, that's an authentication failure, here's the solution. And the language model can actually write a ticket and send it to the workforce to fix it, or you can tie it to an automation and get the automation to fix the problem for you that you've pre-programmed. Just before we finish, but what's the impact on the final customer? The customer demands are always there, looking more for personalization. What would the impact be? Because first, you mentioned it's on cost effective. Here. Yeah. Another one would be customer satisfaction. Yeah, exactly. So if you look at all of the whole customer interaction, what you want to make sure is that with a small language model, it's much easier to tune that and train it with your own data. Because it's small, then the cost of doing the tuning and the training we use, IBM have and Red Hat have launched Instruct Lab, which means that you can bring in your model and you can add in your enterprise data, and then you create your own model for your company, your data, 
That means that when the customer interacts, you're in charge of that experience. You're in control of the data that they see. If you use a large language model, which has taken all the data from the internet, you don't know what it's going to say back to your customers. So you want that level of control. IBM is very confident about the, these models that we've released into open source. If you're using our models with our What's Next platform, it's indemnifying you against intellectual property claims because we're confident that we know the data that we used. We have your data, everything is fine. So that, that type of experience then for the end customer means they're getting to see you as you want to put yourself forward because it's your company's perspective that is going to them. What? Can we recommend to the audience? We're going to share some links, of course. There are some videos about this and there are a lot Absolutely. of information yeah. available at IBM.com. Yeah. Yes. So at IBM.com, you can go in and you can search for IBM small language models. There are many articles there. You can go onto YouTube. There are explainers as well on how small language models work in general across industry. Yeah, I highly recommend it. There's a world of information there. We're really proud of it as well because If you think about it from a sustainability perspective, then training small language models uses maybe like 95% less resources and is giving you the same performance or better. So yeah. why wouldn't you want to do that from a sustainability perspective, from a cost efficiency perspective, and from a control perspective that you can bring your own data in and you can control the outputs. This is huge. Thank you very much for this conversation. We will continue here and NWC 25 in Barcelona at IBM.